Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're finally starting to get into some of the more interesting things. I know other some of these other videos have been kind of boring just because they're teaching you the basics and the fundamentals, but now we're into if statements, which in my opinion is the first like pretty interesting thing in programming that you can do, at least to make some uh, somewhat interesting programs, like you can do some cool things with them. So I'm going to be teaching you if, else, and l if in this video. These are known as conditional statements, so essentially uh, the way that you read it is like, if this happens, do that. Otherwise, do this. If this happens, um, do that. If this doesn't happen, check if this happens, do that. So it's a way to check, you know, using these conditions that we've just talked about previously, if something happened and then execute a block of code after that. So I'm going to show you the basic syntax of an if statement and then we'll just get into an example. So looks like this. Um, if I, I'm going to be typing this like I work in so many programming languages, so I might make a few mistakes here. But the idea is if we have if like that, then we put some condition. So condition goes here and then whatever's inside of these squiggly brackets will happen only if this condition is true. If this condition is false, we will simply skip over this if statement. So we'll go over to line nine, pass by it and then continue doing whatever else happens. So I'll show you some examples. So like FMT dot print LN will just print like before if so this will always happen before if we'll print in here after if and then in the middle we'll print um, if like inside if just so you guys can see all these things. Okay, so the condition here is simply any of those Boolean expressions or statements that I showed you in the previous videos. So anything here that evaluates to true or false, you can put. So what I can do, and I'll just make a variable up here, I'll say val colon equals like, let's just say Tim, actually, let's make it name uh, like that. So we'll say name colon equals Tim. And then here, I'll just say if name is equal to Tim, then inside if right so this is the block that i've set up this is saying if this expression is true then do whatever is inside of these set of curly braces so in fact i could do something else in here too uh like i could print another line i could put another if statement if i wanted to uh we'll get into nested uh, stuff later on but that's the idea so let's run this and see how this looks go run tutorial dot go okay we get in here now we get before if inside if after if now that's because this was true right name does equal Tim but what if I now go to name does not equal Tim so I change this this obviously now is gonna be false we know that's false so will we print what's inside the if statement well based on my definition we shouldn't and let's have a look at this code and see if it does so no it does not we get before if and then after if so notice that what happened was we did this line we checked if this was true since it wasn't we skipped over line 10 we just passed by it and then we continued on with the rest of the program and we printed after if now you'll notice that I'm doing some indented stuff here like I'm indenting it forward the standard kind of convention when you write these if statements is to anything that's happening inside the if to indent it in by one tab space or tab space is that a word I don't know one tab uh, like that you don't have to though so long as it's inside of these squiggly brackets uh, it's totally fine uh, and that's the idea behind that and also notice like inside this function we tabbed everything inside one um, that's just so that it's easier to read and you can kind of tell what's inside of what right okay so that's the if statement and that's pretty much how that works right you have a value you check some kind of uh, expression in here I mean we could do this if we wanted to we could say name does not equal Tim or name equals Tim now obviously this is always gonna be true but that's totally valid and if I go ahead and, and run this then we'll see that that if statement does run and we get before if inside if after if so that's the basics of the if now there is another thing called the else and the else is pretty useful because sometimes what you want to say is if this condition uh, is true do this otherwise do this right so I'm gonna make a better example now uh, and I'm gonna put um, actually age so let's say age colon equals 17 now the example I want to use is if you are older than 18 you can ride the roller coaster otherwise you can't ride it right that or that's some example just random one that we'll use so the condition I should put here if I want to check if they're older than 18 should be age greater than or equal to 18 so I'm gonna say if they're 18 or older than 18 then what we'll print is you can ride okay like that but otherwise if they can't ride what I want to do is print you can't ride so most of you without knowing what an else statement is which I'm going to show you here would just do this you cannot ride right so you'd say okay so if they can ride we'll print this uh, otherwise we'll print you cannot ride but can you think about what the issue is going to be if I do this well what's going to happen is that even if we can ride 
we'll print you can ride and then after the if statement we'll still print you cannot ride so in the situation where you are older than 18 it'll tell you, you can ride and then immediately it will tell you you can't we don't want that to happen so what we're going to introduce and in fact let me just prove to you that that's true so let's go go run tutorial.go uh, it prints you cannot ride just because we were 17 but if we put 19 here and we run this then it says you can ride you cannot ride uh, so the way we fix this is by putting an else statement so an else is simply what happens if the condition above it is not true so if this is false do this that's all that means so no matter what one of these two statements every single time will be printed because if this isn't true and we don't run what's inside of that, we will run what's inside of the else. And the syntax of the else is you write else. You don't need any condition here because it's just going to happen no matter what, so long as you know this isn't true. And then you put these little braces and then you write whatever inside of the else that you want to run. Uh, and actually in this case, let's say you cannot ride, say wait, and I'm going to do percent D years and then what i'm going to do is actually say 18 minus age so i'll tell them how many years they need to wait until they can ride so 18 minus age okay so let's do that and let's put this down to 17 now and let's run this now what is the issue that this is telling me uh, okay what is the squiggly line uh has possible formatting directive set d uh i think that's fine okay so go run tutorial.go wait percent d Ah, sorry, this is supposed to be print F, not print LN. I was like, what the heck is happening there? Okay, let me just run this one more time and have a look at this down here. And we get, you cannot ride, wait one year, right? So wait one year before you can ride uh, the roller coaster. So that's how this works with the if else. So if this is not true, do that. If this is true, don't do that. So let's make this 19 and let's just show you what happens if we now are old enough. Go run tutorial.go and we get you can ride. So that's the uh, the basics there. Okay, now the last thing to show is something called else if. So else if uh, kind of happens, like consider the case where maybe if they're older than 18, they can ride. If they're 18, they can um, ride with a parent or something. I don't know, like if they're under 18, they can ride with a parent. But if they're younger than 14, they can't ride at all. So we have like three cases, right? If they're between 14 and 18, they can ride, but they need a parent. If they're older 18, then they can ride by themselves. Um, and if they're younger than 14, then they just can't ride. How do we accommodate that case? Well, I mean, we could do like three if statements, right? Like I could do this and I could say, if age is greater than or equal to 18, print, you can ride, let's say alone. And then here I could do if age is greater than or equal to 14 um, and age is less than or equal to 18. So this way, uh, actually, we'd have to say less than in that case. So if they're between 14 and 18, but they're not 18, because if they were 18, they'd be able to ride. Then we'll print, you can ride with a parent. And then otherwise, so in the situation where they're less than 14, so if age is less than 14, then print, you cannot ride. So this will work. Um, this is fine. But the issue with this is I've kind of repeated a lot of logic. Like I've checked if they're older than 14, um, like twice I've checked if they're younger than 18 twice there's actually a way easier way to write this and I'm gonna leave this down below just so we can compare to it after um, but there's a way that we can use something called else if so what I can do is say something like this if age is greater than or equal to 18 then what we can say is uh, fmt dot print line you oops you can ride alone if I could type okay so you can ride alone and then Otherwise, so if they can't ride alone, what I can do is use an else if. Now, what an else if does is essentially say, if this isn't true, check this. So if this doesn't happen, then check if this is true. That's how this works. So I'll say else if, and I actually don't need the brackets there, but I'll say else if age is greater than or equal to 14, then fmt dot print line. And we'll just say you can ride. Actually, we'll just copy all this. Okay, so you can ride with a parent like that okay so now we have the if we have an else if and i mean we could do another else if but what we can actually do is add an else here and what the else will say is in any other situation so if they're not older than 18 and if they're not older than 14 then what we can do is we can tell them i'll just copy this fmt down here uh that they cannot ride 
So this is the equivalent to here, and you can notice that's a little bit neater, it makes a little bit more sense, um, and yeah, that's kind of the idea behind this if, else, if, else. So again, else if will work with any condition here, and it will only check this if this isn't true. Then the else, what this says is, well, if everything above me was not true, then go ahead and execute the else. Now, what's interesting is that we can put more than one else if if we want. So I can do, uh, let me tab that down here, another else if, and I could check, say, like, else if age greater than or equal to 10. And then we can add the else at the end, but we don't even need the else if we don't want it. So just notice that all these things are optional. Uh, we don't need an else. We can have an else if we want. We don't need else ifs. We can have as many of them, though, if we do want them. The only thing that you need to remember is that else cannot go in between else ifs because this is like the default case. Like if all else fails, <laughs> it's a good way, a good punny way to put it almost. If all of this fails, then do the else. So I hope that's kind of making sense. Uh, but I want to break down what I've written here a little bit more just to really clear this up. So notice that here I had to check if age was greater than or equal to 14 and less than 18. The reason for that is if they're 18, like let's say they're 18, right? then we will print that you can ride alone. Now, if I omitted this, so I got rid of that and, then it would also print you can ride with a parent, which I mean is technically true, but we don't want to show that, right? We only want to show them one of these print statements. So because of that, I had to add this extra condition that said, let's make sure they're in that range so we don't accidentally print two statements. And then same thing down here, right? I had to say if age is less than 14, because if I just put uh, like an else statement, for example, then Actually, would an else statement work? I guess an else statement would work if I did that here. But anyways, uh, that's the idea that like this middle condition, I had to check something extra, whereas up here, I don't have to check that. The reason I don't have to check that is because if they're greater than 18, we'll print you can ride alone and then just skip down to line 15 after the else statement, right? So that's why this is oftentimes much better to use than this kind of structure with just three independent if statements, because you obviously can write multiple if statements, you can put ifs inside of else's, else inside of ifs. Uh, it starts getting pretty complex and interesting the further we go. But let's test this and make sure that I'm not lying to you guys. So go run tutorial.go and we get you can ride alone when they're 19. So let's put them at 16 and let's make sure that it works for that case. And it says now you can ride with a parent. Okay, and let's put them at 13 and see what we get. And it says you cannot ride. So that's the basics behind the if else if else quick recap the basic um, almost formula for writing this is let's get rid of that for a second is when you want to check if something happens and then do that you write if you write the condition you want to check this has to evaluate to true or false you put your brackets and then whatever you put inside of here and you can put multiple things as many things as you want that will happen if this condition is true then what you can do is you can add else ifs and else and those are optional you don't need them but you're allowed to add them so we can go back and we can add the else if the way the else if works is if this doesn't happen then check this and if that's true do this but if this happens here this will not even be checked we won't even bother doing that comparison right now if we go back and we add the else now the else is optional we don't need that and this says if all else fails everything above me go ahead and do this. And we can have multiple else's, of course, if we want those. So that has been this video on if, else, if, and else. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next Golang tutorial.